Before we start this video, I would like to explain some mistake that I did in the previous video. If you remember, at the end of the previous video, we have set a messaging style for our notification and if we send a notification and if we try to send a reply in here, for example, if we say hello, you will see that our message would be added at the top of our notification. This is the end of our messages list and not the start of our messages. In the previous video, I said that this is the start of our messages, but uh, I have said wrong. The reason that this reply has been added to the end of our uh, messages list is that in here, inside this send messaging style notification method, we are adding messages each time that we call this method. And if you remember, I'm calling this method from a messages broadcast receiver from here. I'm calling that method whenever the user tries to uh, press that send button. So whenever the user tries to send a new message, all of these messages will be added to the array list as well. This is not a good place to add different messages to our static array list. Instead of doing it in here, I'm going to move uh, these messages to my onCreate method. Top in here, before everything, let's add our messages. Now if we run our application, we should see that our message would be added uh, to the end of our list. Okay, let's send a notification. This time, let's say hello. You can see that uh, the message has been added to the end of this notification. I also need to explain that using static variables like we are using in here is not a good idea. And the reason for that is uh, that the life of a static variable or like in here an array list is within the application itself. For example, if we close our application right now and if we go to our notification and try to add a reply in here, let's say hi, if you try to send uh, this message, you can see that all of our notification will be deleted because now the messages array list is empty because we are not inside our application. In a real world application, you may want to retrieve these messages from maybe a database or if it's an online application, you may want to retrieve them uh, from the web server. Okay, that's enough of talking about the issues that our application had. Let's jump to the topics that we are going to talk about in this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about some small concepts related to notifications in which the first one is grouping different notifications. If your application is sending too many notifications that may take uh, too much place in the navigation drawer or for any other reason that you may want to group different notifications together, you may want to use the set group method on the builder object of the notification. But it's important to know that, beginning from API 1126, if your application sends more than three notifications, all of those notifications will be grouped together. We will see how that behavior will look like. Okay, let's start by creating a new method and send to notification and group them together. One thing that is going to be different from other notifications is that on this builder I'm going to say dot set group and I need to pass a key for my group in here. For example, let's just say first group. Let's also copy this notification one more time in order to have two notifications and group them together. Uh, let's call this one second builder. I need to issue this notification as the manager.notify2 for the ID. It's important that these IDs wouldn't be the same because if you put the same IDs, the notification will be updated and no new notification will be issued. Second builder.build. 
Despite these two notifications, we need to create another notification called summary notification. We will see why I'm going to create that. So once again, I'm going to say notification compact builder. Let's call it uh, summary builder. New notification compact that builder. This and channel one. But for this summary builder, we need to set another attribute as well, and that is set summary group or set group summary to true. This attribute in here will tell the Android system that this new notification will be the summary that will be shown to the user after grouping different notifications together. You can change the title and the text in here. For example, you can say two new notifications in here in order to show a summary text to the user. But of course, you need to issue this notification as well. Let's copy this line of code and let's change it a little bit. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is to call this method from inside the onClickList line. I'm going to comment this line for now. And let's say send a group of notification. Let's run our application and see how does it look. If you try to send a notification, if you check the notification drawer, you can see the summary. Uh, let's also freeze the thread for maybe two seconds in order to see them better. Before issuing the first notification, I can uh, create a try catch block and use thread.sleep as we did before in this course. But instead of that, I can use system clock with a capital S and dot sleep and I can pass, uh, let's say, 2000 milliseconds. This way, we don't need to create the try catch block. Okay, let's uh, do that after issuing the first notification and also before the summary notification. Let's try running our application. This time, if we send a notification and we check our notification drawer, we can see the notifications step by step. As you saw, first notification issued, second notification issued, and after that, we can see the summary. But as you can see, this content text in here has been ignored. And that's because beginning uh, from API level 24, you don't need this uh, summary notification. It will automatically summarize the notifications for you. You only create this summary notification for API level uh, 23 and lower. For example, if we try to run our application on uh, an API lower than uh, level 24, uh, for example, I have a Nexus 1 with API level 22 in here. If we try to run it on this device, which is really ugly, we should see that two new notifications text. Let's send the notification and let's check the notification drawer. First one, second one, and after that, the summary notification. Two new notifications as it said in here. But as I said at the beginning of this video, if you don't put any group for new notifications beginning uh, from API level 26, they will be automatically grouped together if uh, there are four or more notifications. Let's try that as well. I have deleted all the set group attribute and also we don't need to notify the summary notification. Instead, let's just uh, issue the second notification twice or maybe uh, three times. But of course, we need to change the ID. Now let's run our application and see how does it look without this set group attribute. Let's try sending a notification. First one, second one, third one. And for the fourth one, we are seeing the summary, which has been created automatically. Okay, this was grouping different notifications. Just one last thing that I would like to mention is that I have tried and sending uh, summary notifications with this set group attributes for different notifications on API level 19. And it didn't seem to work on that uh, level of API. Let's press some Ctrl Z and uh, undo the thing that we have done. 
Okay, now uh, all these set groups are back and uh, we are notifying the summary builder as well. Let's run our application on API level 19. If we try to send a notification on this API and if we check the notification drawer, you can see that we didn't get the first and second notification and we just get the summary notification. I don't know why this is the behavior for this level of API. I didn't try the 21 and 20 version of API, but in 19 this looks like this. They didn't mention it anywhere in the references or documents. This uh, set group method uh, should work in all level of APIs. But if you want to overcome this problem, you may want to uh, not to group different notifications together instead. Uh, issue the first and second notification and after that cancel these two notification and send maybe a summary notification of course without this attribute set group summary okay let's move on from this part like grouping different notifications together you can also group different notification channels together as well you may want this behavior for example if you have uh, some personal and some business data in your application you may want to send different messages and let's say comments for every user, uh, both categorized in personal and also business matter. For that reason, you may want to uh, create different groups for your notification channels and group different channels uh, as well. If you remember, I have created my notification channels inside my application class. Also, I never talked about this application class. This is the initial point of your application. This will even uh, run before the uncreate of your main activity. So it's a good place to have any sort of initializing that you want. For example, in here we are creating our notification channels. Let's quickly create two more channels in here and uh, after that group them together. I'm going to copy these two lines. And also we need to create these two channels as well. I can say manager dot create notification channel and I can pass my channel two and three. Before creating all of these channels, we need to create our channel group. And if you do that after creating different channels, you will get some exceptions. We can create uh, notification channels by saying manager, which I need to initialize before all of this. Let's move it uh, top in here. Let's say manager dot create notification channel group, this one. And in here I can say new notification channel group. And I just need to pass the ID and a name uh, for that group. Let's say group one for the ID and also for the name, let's say uh, first group. After creating this uh, group, we can say, for example, channel one dot set group to the group that we just created. We need to pass the ID of that group, which is group one in this case, for the other two uh, channels as well. Also, I need to change uh, the name of this channel to channel 2. Let's say channel 2 dot set group to that group. Let's change the name of this one as well. Channel 3 dot set group to group 1. We will change these groups later on, but for now, let's just run our application and see how does this grouping looks. We need to go to the setting of our application, settings, applications and notifications. Notification is the name of my project. Let's check the notifications. You can see we have a first group in here which has uh, three notification channels. If we want, we can create another group. Let's copy this line of code and uh, change it a bit. Group two. And for its name, let's say second group. And for the second notification, let's pass group two. 
Now if I run the application, I should see different grouping, but before that we need to uninstall our application. Let's go to the app setting page and let's uninstall our application. Let's run it once again. Uh, let's go back to our application setting, apps and notifications, notifications, notifications. This time you can see two different groups, first group and second group, which only channel two is inside the second group. Also, if one of your notification channels don't have any groups that will be categorized as uh, other groups, we need to uninstall our application once again and install it in order to see that behavior. This time you can see that we have three different groups, first group, second group, and another one called other. In some cases, you may want to group different notification channels. Uh, if you need, this is how you can do it. You can also check that if your application has uh, the permission to send a notification or not. For example, uh, let's create another method and Let's check the notification uh, settings. Inside this method, we can create an instance of our notification manager. I'm going to create the compat one. After that, we can use this manager to, let's say, uh, are notifications enabled or not? This method in here will return a boolean. The name is descriptive. It will return true if the notifications are enabled and it will return false if the notifications are disabled. So we can create a, a if statement in here. Let's say if manager dot are notifications enabled is not true. Let's add an explanation mark in here. In here, you can show maybe an alert dialog or maybe a snack bar in order to tell the user that these notifications are necessary for our application, so enable them. For example, let's create uh, an alert dialog in here. Alert dialog, the support one, dot builder. Let's call it alert builder is equal to new alert dialog dot builder. We need the context. After that, let's say set title to notifications are disabled. After that, set message to please enable the notification. That's enough for now. Let's just uh, show our uh, dialog. We can say alert builder dot show. In the else case, let's just uh, toast the message and let's just say notifications are enabled we just need to call this method for example uh, from inside this on click list line. let's say check notification settings let's also comment this line for now and let's run our application right now notifications are enabled for our application let's quickly disable them from uh, inside the settings From here, let's disable all the notifications and let's run our application once again. This time, if I try to send a notification, you can see this dialog, which doesn't have any button or anything. But if you want, you can add two buttons in here, for example, one for dismissing and also one for enabling the notification. And you can pass an intent to that enable button in order to navigate the user to maybe the application setting so that he would be able to enable the notification. Let's do that in here. First of all, um, let's create the set negative button. I'm just going to dismiss the dialog in the case of clicking on the dismiss button. I'm not going to do anything. We just need the button. Dot set positive button let's say enable new on click listener and inside this on click listener I can say intent intent is equal to new intent for the action in here I can say the settings provider 
action app notification setting i will talk about this uh, first one in here but for now we need this one action app notification setting after that we can say intent.postextra we need the package in here for, but first of all we need the key which i'm going to pass uh, settings.extra app package and for the package name i can say get package name let's start the activity from here let's run our application and see how does it look right now the notifications are disabled so if we try to send the notification we can see the dialog we can dismiss it easily let's uh, click on enable this time you can see that we have been navigated to the application setting and if we enable the notification from here and go back to our application now we can send a notification which in this case uh, you have saw the toast message let's try sending it once again you can see the toast message which i have put in the else case but as you can see in here i am getting a warning and the warning says that this field requires api level 26 so in order to uh, open the application setting for api lower than version 26 we need to have a check in here let's say if build.version.sdk int is greater than or equal build.versioncode.oreo let's uh, do this intent but in the else case we need to create another intent and for the action this time I can say settings action application detail setting we are going to open the applications details and not the notification directly but this time instead of putting some extra we can say intent dot set data and we can pass a uri in here the address of our application setting for that i can say uri dot parse and uh, and I can pass a text in here. I need to say package. We have seen this before. Plus get package name. After that, we just need to uh, start the activity. Let's run our application uh, one more time in API level 28. And after that, we will run it on API level 22 as well. The notifications are enabled for our application. Let's quickly uh, disable them from here let's disable all of them let's go back to our application and let's send the notification let's enable them it's working as it did uh, before let's also try running our application on api level 22. let's disable the notifications uh, on this device as well From here, I need to uncheck these show notifications. Let's turn the notification off and let's run our application once again. This time on the API level 22, if we try to send a notification, we are seeing the dialog once again. If we click on enable, we will be navigated to this uh, application setting page, which we can show the notification from here. Let's go back and try to send a notification you can see the toast message that seems to work fine this was a general way of checking if the notifications are enabled or not beginning from api level 26 you can also check that if some uh, notification channel is enabled or not for that let's quickly create another method inside this method once again i need to create my notification manager but this time i don't need the compat version because it's going to be on api level 26 let's call it manager is equal to we need to define it this way get system service and we can pass notification manager dot class as the key for this get system service method but right now it's complaining and the complaint is about uh, the API version. It needs to be called from API level 23 and higher. 
we can overcome this problem by let's say create another if statement and check for different build version or we can come before uh, the declaration of this method and type at require API this one in here android.support.annotation and we can pass the API version in here for example let's say 26 now that we have annotated this method with this annotation you can see the error is gone it's basically the same as uh, you check the build version manually it's just a more convenient way after defining the manager we need to get the notification channel that we are going to check that if it's enabled or not for that I can say notification channel let's call it channel is equal to manager dot get notification channel and we need to pass the channel ID for that uh, it's better to have different constants but uh, since I have defined my notification channel inside the app class and hard-coded the channel IDs for example this channel one I can copy them from here we need to pass this ID in here after that we need to check that if the channel is null or not if null is not equal to channel inside this if statement we can check that if our channel is enabled or not and the way we do that is by saying if channel dot get importance is not equal to uh, notification manager dot importance none this means that if we have some importance for our channel and our channel is enabled so in the else case once again we may want to alert the user with an alert diamond Just a simple alert dialog builder with a title, a message, a negative button that will dismiss the dialog and also a positive button in which in here I'm going to create my intent. I know for sure that the API version of the user's device is API level 26 and higher so in here I can use intent intent is equal to new intent and as the action I can pass action app notification setting. After that, intent.put extra settings dot extra app package and get package name as a value. But in here we need to add another extra as well. We can say intent.put extra and we can say settings dot extra channel ID. This one in here. After that, we need to pass our channel ID, which once again, I'm going to paste it in here. This way, we will be navigated directly to that specific channel setting and not the application's notification setting. We just need to start our activity. After everything, let's just show our alert dialog. And let's call this method from inside the unclick listener. But in here, I need to do another check and that's uh, for the API version. Let's say if uh, build.version.sdkint is greater than equal build.versionquotes.o then call this method. Let's say check uh, notification channel setting this one. Let's run our application. Make sure that your device is uh, API level 26 and higher. Let's disable the channel 1 notification for our application. Right now the notifications are disabled. Let's enable them and uh, for the channel 1 let's disable the notifications. Let's run our application once again. This time if we try to send a notification we can see the dialog. Let's dismiss it. Let's send another notification. This time if we try to enable the notifications, you can see that we are directly inside the channel one settings and not the notification setting 
in general. Let's enable this and let's send a notification. We haven't uh, add any else case in here, but it seems to work fine. Okay, in this video, I just wanted to talk about some small concepts like grouping different notifications, also grouping different notification channels, and also get the channel setting and notification setting and uh, tell the user if you need those notifications for your application. In the next video, I'm going to create a custom view for your notification that is possible in Android environment, and we are going to do it together in the next video. See you in the next video.